Thanks to everyone and welcome to the Church of God Young People's Radio Broadcast. This is a broadcast of our live weekly youth service. We're located in Jackson, Michigan and are under the anointed pastorate of Pastor Frank Hampton Jr. With this broadcast, we desire to let the young people of today know that Jesus is still the answer. He is still relevant and the source of true happiness, joy, peace, and purpose. May God bless you richly as you listen in. In the home you are believed and listen, now the banner of the cross we bear. today's broadcast and today's message is presented by brother lee we have returned your bible to ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse number 12 i'd like to thank all those coming out tonight to the house of god all those tuning into the broadcast we appreciate you as well especially the brother in prison keep going strong for god ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse number 12 and if one prevail against him here he's teaching the power amen of how to overcome obstacles or challenges he says, if one shall prevail against him, if one comes against a person and prevails, overcomes him. Come on, he's teaching a principle here. Come on. Two shall withstand him. Two shall withstand him. Shall withstand him. him. Come on. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Go back up to verse number nine. Come on. Two are better than one. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Come on. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. When you're going through some tough, woe to him that is alone. Read. For he have not another to help him up. For he have not another to help him up. All right. We're going to start a series on relationships and we're going to hit some very salient points regarding healthy relationships and why relationships are so important here the wisest man in the world began to give a premise on relationship and let me just begin by saying that if you're going through life without a relationship with God you're going to run into something sooner or later that you can't deal with. If you're going through life. It's designed. For you to be in a relationship. With God. Life is designed. For you to be in a relationship. With God. The fundamental aspect. Of those that reject God. Is the principle of pride. It's not just a love for the world or love for getting high, a love for premarital sex, a love for partying, putting dope in your body. No, 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 no. One of the greatest difficulties that people don't understand is when you reject a relationship with God, one of the critical aspects is pride. You think I can make it in this world by myself. I don't need God to help me. Watch. Let me show you. Well, let me tell you, friend, you look, my God, in a few years, few months, a few weeks, and you will see, my God, individuals trying to make it without God will end up eventually making a mess out of their life. 
Individuals trying to make it without God will eventually is set up and designed that way. So you will eventually, my God, get so weighed down with life, get so weighed down with the burdens of the issues you brought on yourself that you will humble yourself and say, God, I need some help. God, I need to humble myself. And some people, you know what pride gets them? They will be going down, down, down. But instead of humbling themselves, they'll try harder, harder, and harder. But don't you know sin is like quicksand? The harder you try to get out, the deeper you go. So instead of humbling themselves and saying, Lord, I think about the prodigal son, and we're going to preach on that in just a few moments. But the critical is, he said he had half of a rich man's lifetime accumulation. And in a few days, it said when he had spent all. So if you was to translate that to today, this man has slaves, servants, all this land, all this stuff. If you was to translate that today, he probably was a millionaire. So if they split that in half, he probably had, let's say, $500,000. In a few days, he went from 500000 basically, to broke. The thought came to me, why couldn't he see, once he was partying all his life and money away, why couldn't he say, once he had lost 100000 in a few days, he said, I ain't going to lose no more. Why, why not when he lost half of it, 250000 Why didn't he come to a sin? Because pride. Pride will cause you to have to go all the way down before you'll reach your hand up to God to lift you out. Many times individuals, their life gets so bewildered. I said, Lord, I do not want you to have to help me get saved. God will help you get saved. You know how? By humbling you. As far as it takes to humble you, I'll go. You want me to go further? I'll go further. You want me to go further? I'll go further. You don't realize you're not fighting against this person or that person. You're fighting against God. And God would allow sin and the weight of sin, and the weight of dealing with life itself to wear you down. But thank God we serve a merciful God. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come on to me. I'm not going to dog you out now. Come on to me. Bring it to me. All those burdens you've caused upon yourself. Bring it to me and I'll take them and I'll give you rest. What a merciful God we serve. So that first relationship that's so important for us to have is a relationship with God. To come to God saying, Lord, I'm sorry for all the sins I've ever committed. I'm sorry for all the things I've ever done. I'm humbling myself. That's why we get on our knees. I humble myself before you, letting you know I need you, God. I need you to save me. I need you to forgive me. I need you like the potter needed to clay. My life is all broken up. Lord, can you please, like you made over the pot and made the clay, can you make me over again? Can you put my life back in order? So one of the critical aspects of the fundamental relationships that we need is a relationship with God. Men, sometimes it takes a great deal for them to humble themselves. I remember I'm on the back wall, man, and the last thought came to me. I already had paid the price, wanted to get saved, was ready. And then the devil came and said, if you walk down there, everybody going to know you ain't got it going on, that you couldn't do it alone, that you couldn't make it, that you had to need, you need God. I said, you know what, devil? It's the truth. I couldn't make it. I need some help. I ain't got it going on. I need God to help me. So if that's what the last thing you're going to play, you are defeated. Here I go. Amen, my God. So if you're a man and you're tuning into the broadcast or you're a young man or a man and you're here tonight and you haven't made that decision, and I'm going to tell you the devil is dirty. The devil is a dirty devil, my God, my God. Here, he was trying to hinder me from receiving the greatest inspiration, the greatest relationship. Hold on. You see, you weak. You need God. You couldn't make it. No, no, no. I'm a real man. That's why I'm humbling myself. I'm letting God know I want to be on your team. Amen. A real man will humble himself and say, God, I want to serve you. And if you don't believe that, all you got to do is look around thinking they got it going on, got all the answers, this, that, and the other, but don't got nothing, my God, going on for themselves. So here, one of the critical aspects is to obtain a relationship with God. And the devil 
will do all that he can to hinder a person from obtaining a relationship with God. And he'll do all that he can to cause a person to hinder that relationship they've established with God to get in between it. But we're going to talk about the power of relationships, the power of relationships and how they're so important for all of us on many levels with God as a family, as a community, as a church family, on your jobs. If we get these points that we're going to cover in this series on relationships, it will help us not only make heaven, but it will help us here on earth. All right. So he said here in Solomon that it was critically important that we understand. Read that verse number 12 one more time. And if one prevail against him, if one shall prevail against him, two shall withstand him. So if one comes against a person, two shall withstand him. Two will be able to hold him off. Come on and read. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Go over to Mark chapter six, verse number seven, the power of relationships. And he called unto him the twelve. Uh -huh. And began to send them forth by two and two. He sent the twelve out two by two. He said, don't go alone, but go together. It will be a struggle when you get out there. Sometimes you'll get weary. Sometimes you may get furlong or you may get tired. But if you got a partner to help you out, sometimes we'll be driving down the highway and we'll get tired. And I'll reach over and I'll tell my wife, I say, babe, I, I need you to stay up with me because I'm getting tired. And if you stay up with me and you talk to me and you'll be amazed, you get into a good conversation, man, you get into a good conversation. Next thing you know, you're coming from Georgia or wherever you're at, you look up and Cincinnati's about right there. My God, after y'all get flowing a little bit deeper, you look up and it says up on Dayton. You look up a little bit further, it says, welcome to Finley. You look up, my God, before you know it, it says Toledo, right around the corner. You look up, this is a big old sign with a mitten, welcome to Michigan. You say, hold on, I'm loving Michigan. Now you get on a little highway, you're going down a two-lane now, you look up and it says Blissfield. My God, and then mess around, you look up before too long, and it says, what, 10 miles to Jackson. Now you can be like, you know what? You can sleep on now. I'm close enough to home. I'm going to stay up now. But what happens, my God? What? Because you had somebody with you, you was able to go a little further than you could have gone alone. Go over to Ephesians 4, verse number 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Come on. Beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Yes. It, come on. With all lowliness. Yes. And meekness. Uh -huh. With long suffering. Come on. Forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Here he said one of the critical parts about how important it is for the even the church to stay together. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Let me say this before we touch on the point there of endeavoring. The most powerful family is not the wealthiest family, is not the most educated family. The most powerful family that you'll see is a family that is close together. More than money, more than anything, the most critical thing that you can have is a family that's close together. Anything that a father or a mother can ever teach their children, nothing, no lesson is greater than to teach them that no matter what comes or goes, y'all stay together. If you ever want to hurt a mother, if you ever want to hurt a father, you just let a family of children go through something in which the children are no longer together. If you ever want to tear a mother's heart out, my God, a child may lose a job, a child may get sick, a child may go through a period of time in which they don't have much money. But my God, nothing will tear a mother's heart or a father's heart like two of the children that no longer will talk together. Here, he said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. What? And we're going to talk in a little bit about how do you endeavor. It says it takes effort. 
Why? Because you have different personalities. You have different makeups. You have different perspectives. And if you don't put forth the effort, things will come between you that will cause the relationship not to be as close. And when that relationship is not as close as it should be, then there will be a weakness there and there will be division. Go over to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 14. Oh, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Come on and read. The power of relationships. Forwardness is in his heart. He diviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Come on. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Come on. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Mm -hmm. A proud look. Come on. A lying tongue. Come on. And hands that shed innocent blood. Come on. A heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Come on. All these things are terrible. But what did he save the last for? Read. Be swift and running to mischief. Come on. A false witness that speaketh lies. He said lying on people. He said God hates that. Read. And he that soweth discord among brothers. He said one of the critical things that God, of all things God hates, he said he that does what? Soweth discord among He said because it affects togetherness. He said one of the things that I hate of all the things in the world is he that soweth discord among the brethren. Now, you have to understand that we're going to get real deep just in a few moments tonight, but this will help us in marriages. This will help us in family. This will help us in fellowship. This will help us on our jobs. This will help us all over if we can establish healthy relationships and maintain them. He said, of all the things I hate, he said, one of them is he that soweth discord. Why? Because unity and togetherness is so important to me. It brings so much that he that does that is something I hate most because the opposite of that is what I need most. It takes so much of me. You know, he talked about bringing the Jews and the Gentiles together. Nothing on earth was able to produce that. He had to die on the cross to produce that. He said, but my blood is so powerful that I can bring the Jews and the Gentiles together as one to build my church. Now, if my blood took that to build it, anyone that would come and to prevent that. Now, he said he that soweth. Now, mind you, and that's why you got to have discernment when it comes to relationships. It said he that soweth. To sow is to plant a seed and then come back and water it later. Then you plant another seed. And you come back and you water and you watch it grow. He said, he that soweth discord. See, to sow it is a subtle. It's not easily detected, but it'll be subtle. It will appear different than it really is. And many times once it appears and you can sense that person is trying to come in between you and your husband or this person and that person, this and the other. By the time it appears to you, the seeds has already been planted, but you didn't know they were planted. By the time they come to you in person and divulge what they're endeavoring to do, you are going to be more vulnerable because you didn't realize that they only would show their true stripes if they had already planted the seeds. Many times, even in families, you'll find after mama die, something comes up. Come after daddy die, come something come comes up. It wasn't the fact that he gave you the car and he gave me the older truck. No, that wasn't the issue. The issue was way over here. When I got a whooping for this, and you seem to have done the same thing, and you didn't get a whooping, you just got a punishment. Oh, I'm getting way ahead of myself tonight. So way over here, I seen something happen that I couldn't make sense of, and it didn't seem fair to me. So I got offended way over here. I got a.
offended. Now, it didn't manifest itself until mama died, until daddy died. But it didn't happen there. It happened way over here that I got offended. And I didn't get that seed, oh, Holy Ghost, plucked up out my garden. And now it's grown into a sequoia tree. The power of good relationships. Whenever I talk to couples, I say, man, listen, you draw a circle and you put a dot in it and you put two other dots. That's God, that's you, and that's her. And you don't let nobody else in that circle. You guard that circle. If y'all got to deal with stuff, y'all deal with it. If he making you upset, don't you call 10 sisters in the church and tell them about all his stuff he doing to you, this, that, and the other. Y'all get the, you don't call up 10 brothers in the church and tell them how off your wife is, how this, that, you, you better be careful because they may not have a good relationship and they may not be happy with your good relationship. So they might throw a seed in on you. You're right. The brothers ain't about nothing anyway. And they just, okay, fight it out. And you better be real careful because she may not be fully sanctified and she may find out that you ain't happy. I know I can kind of make him kind of happy. Oh, you want me to go there? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about physical. Oh, I will preach tonight. I'm not talking about physical. You taking your stuff about what your husband did to you to all these other sisters and you don't know the full extent of their deliverance. They find out, my God, that y'all two ain't getting along to the extent that you ain't. You not satisfying his emotional needs. She mess around and have an emotional affair on your husband. <gasps> oh, Lord, brother so-and-so, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, you such a tremendous brother. What? I found out that you ain't as happy at home as you should be, so I'm not going to touch him because that will be a blatant, but I'll get real emotional with him and make him feel real good, and I'll compliment him. Brother Ross, my goodness, I like your waves. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise the Lord. You are tremendous. Can I take care? Oh, you better be careful if you ain't real. Oh, look, listen, y'all a little young right now, so y'all thinking this can't happen in the church of God but you better be careful who you share your stuff to you better draw that circle and work out your stuff together but you better get something down in your soul that you don't allow situations that are right to offend you because if they go too deep how do we let brother Lee offenses go I was offended how do I let it go come on and read Burden upon the Lord. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Come on. And he shall sustain thee. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast thy offense that's burdening you down upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer thy righteousness to be moved. Okay. Something happened. Lord, you know what happened. I'm asking you, take this thing. Lord, I'm casting this. You don't deal with it. You don't cast it. You get counsel. You figure it out, and it goes deeper, and it goes deeper. And see, once you are offended, everything that transpires in that relationship after the offense takes place is seen through the lens of an offended person. So now dots will start connecting that never was intended to even connect. Stuff will start making sense and the devil will make sure that you get involved and get information that will further your offendedness. And it's amazing, but he could even cause people at your job or people in your family or people wherever that have been offended too to actually get together and they can actually strengthen each other's offenses. So now he said, cast thy care upon the Lord. And he will do what? Sustain thee. He will sustain your experience. Read. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. As long as you do that, he ain't going to, no matter what happens, I don't care how wrong they did you wrong, you cast it to God, you ain't moving. I don't care how bad they did you, you you get that thing to God, no matter how they did you, you ain't moving. My God, they may try to eliminate you, you ain't moving. They will try to tell you this, you ain't moving. Hold on. He shall never suffer the righteous be moved. Hold on. Well, flavor for God. God has given me a burden. I'm giving that thing to God. I'm keeping my spirit right. Amen. Or they ain't gonna never use you. 
I'm keeping my spirit right. Amen. I ain't taking my ball and going home. Amen. I'm still going forth for God. He shall suffer never the righteous to be moved. Thing weighing you down is going to catch you up in a storm. But if you can cast it to the Lord, if you can figure out some way to let it get back to God, saying, God, I don't want this thing here. I don't want this, Lord. May mercy cause this thing to leave me. God, please. Lord, I'm acknowledging it. I'm being real. Take this thing out of me. I know she did me wrong, but I got to see her clear. I'm not stuck with what she did to me. You ain't done me wrong the word forgive means to pardon for an offense committed when you forgive someone you pardon them for offending or something that they did that offended you forgiveness my lord if no forgiveness the relationship is further in jeopardy Forgiveness is the foundation upon which breached relationships stand, my Lord. And the reason why storms come and blow over some towers of relationships is because the foundation had cracks in it. And why do you rarely see people delivered from offenses? Is because they actually have to look at the facts differently than the facts are. They have to look at it from their guilty perspective. Mm -hmm. They got to look at it how they allow the situation to go. When you look at it that way, you acknowledge it at the depth that it is. And God can't deliver you beyond what you acknowledge. So therefore, many times, folk can't really acknowledge it as deep as it is because they're so focused on the person that offended them instead of acknowledging how deep they allowed that offense to go. And they need to apologize for allowing it to go that deep. So therefore, it's going to be difficult for them to ever get fully deliverance because they have to humble themselves all the way down to the ground, not look at the facts, but look at their own weight, their own situation, their own role that they played in it, how they allowed that thing to go so deep, and all the conversations and the communication that they had with others affecting them on how you felt, and you might have tainted other people, so now you got to see what you really could have done because of something that you felt was all on them, and you got to humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm acknowledging and I see myself. I'm asking you to forgive me. Forget what the facts say. I'm asking you to forgive me and to give me the humility that I need so I can have a healthy relationship with them again. I've seen the people torn by sin. They would not let my Jesus in. We like to take a moment and thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's Young People's Broadcast. We pray you were richly blessed by the beautiful singing and the word. Our desire is to reach the youth for Christ. Our church is located in Jackson, Michigan, 140 West South Street. Pastor is Frank Hampton, Jr. Our weekly services, Sunday, 11 a.m., 6 p.m., Wednesday and Friday, we start at 7. And Monday night, youth service begins at 630 please feel free to come and attend the service. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. For more information or for desire for prayer or if you want to be saved, give us a call tonight. 517-812-2019. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Until next time, may God bless is our prayer. You never you never